my favorite song in the album so far. Okay. I love the hook and with that old lady like uh, voice vocals, whether it's done on the keyboard or whether it's the backing vocalist. It has to be the backing doing, vocals. Doing it, I don't know. Yeah. Ah, whatever it was, it was sounded really good to me. The hook, never again, never again. Oh, 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 oh. Very ABBA-esque this song. ABBA-esque. Yes. Totally yes. ABBA-esque. The beat, the way it was sung, mm -hmm. it sounded more ABBA-esque than classic Nuvo. Well, very, very, very well done. This is my favorite song of the album. Huh? Uh, once again about the youth, how they are betrayed, how they've been played, how they've been manipulated. Uh, and the lion has been slaved to in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is one more of those songs on this album where uh, it's all about how the youth is being played with, toyed with, controlled, manipulated, cajoled into believing something that is not true. So yeah, this is all about that. This whole album seems to be headed in one direction and one direction only. Uh, and pretty good, pretty good. The music in this one, the hook, everything was on point. I enjoyed it. Very ABBA-esque, as I said. Uh, if it was a female vocalist, I would have said this is ABBA that I'm listening to and not classic no more. Uh -huh. I definitely, uh, something that was striking was the backing vocals with that falsetto. I am assuming it is a falsetto and they didn't actually bring a female uh, uh, backup, uh, backing artist, sorry, backup vocals artist. It could be done on the keyboard also. How feel. could it be? Could it be? Feel, feel. Yeah, but it could be a real person. You make it. I think it was a person, definitely. Uh, and if it is uh, Mick or Mike Sweeney, uh, it's amazing. I like that. Uh, so it sounded good. It definitely added a whole new dimension to the entire song because it had by itself uh, uh, vocals. Uh, the way uh, this person, I'm assuming the backup is done by uh, Mick Sweeney, he did it himself. Uh, it sounded very good. And then the uh, drums giving it entire uh, pace to the song, a direction to the song. Uh, it's more like uh, an anthem song for uh, this album where never again, never again kind of thing is happening. It's enjoyable for sure.
mean this Sound is really the good. song beautiful this is the song beautiful hook very very good vocals in this one uh beautiful vocals beautiful music it's and that tune beautiful beautiful music all over all around all around it's all over it's a good song really good song you know there's a song you can definitely listen to many times all over. the time yeah it's, it's a playlist it's a beautiful song. song yeah it's a playlist song it definitely should go on my playlist oh i like the song i loved it throughout i loved the vocalist over here i mean i do not have to say anything about him and the moment i we said dep depressed modish he's changed his mood altogether so after that song he still uh, sounds lovely. depressed no, modish sounded amazing he's made for it this sounds amazing yeah, yeah. this made one for this. sounds really he's good he's made for this no really vibrations good. nothing but he's still depressed mode Dep still depressed mode but sounds good he sounds he's got amazing. a good voice he's got a good voice and so they, they, they can't blame him for sounding depressing the lyrics are depressing still but it's a great song great music ah, great vocals song. you can listen to this many times over and wow was that the saxophone in there <laughs> unique unique definitely unique uh, song i love and this beautifully all done all the way all the way i like it was that the guitar that was used i don't know what all they did but whatever they did it was it magical all done on the keyboard. it was magical yeah and then that Sound so again, idea. again the sound of a person. Was that the backup singer, or was it actually done on the keyboard? Now I'm, uh, now I'm, now I'm confused actually because it was very consistent and it sounded great. The whole song as a the whole piece, it sounded amazing. This should could be in a movie. I mean, uh, as a great piece. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to this, uh, if you recommend this to somebody, this should have been one hit wonder kind of a thing because I have not not heard of classic novo. Uh, so if they only release this song or a solo, uh, something of this caliber, literally this would have gone around the world. It It's sounds like one of those good. Farrelly Brothers movies. There's something about Mary Shelley. Yeah, Shana, it sounds that those good. kind of uh, and there it could fit. Uh, dumb and Dumber kind of things. At the right time, this song could be played. Yeah, I mean uh, the entire album is worth it just because of this song for me right now. Yeah. I enjoyed it that much. I mean, see, it's, it's like a Farrelly Brothers kind of outfit. This one. the classic novo guys from classic novo yes, they are it's, it's, it's depressing great, great it's things. depressing it's sad but it's also funny at times you know so maybe maybe that's their purpose mm -hmm. or that's one of the ways to look at them that the music this is happy music you know it's actually music. music sounds good you can enjoy it you can sing along but as essentially most of the lyrics are depressing what can i say a good song this is a really good song something like this, this is my this is my new favorite on this this song. is the favorite this is definitely the favorite uh, this is my favorite in a while uh, it's that way i like it i like the hook i like everything about it i'm going to listen to it again
Yeah. Now the peppy song musically, I thought it was going to be an instrumental, but it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't. By the title, you guessed it. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, it was interesting nevertheless. And yeah, musically it was very good to listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, the vocals are pretty similar to the first few songs in the album. So even though the music is upbeat and cheerful, uh, something about his voice just makes it sound depressing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, yeah, overall it's still a good song. You know, after listening to the last two songs, I have a newfound respect for ah. classic Nuvo. So yeah, even though this might be not as good or nowhere as close to the last it two songs. It isn't actually. Yeah, I'll still say it's good enough. Mm. Uh, for me, there was nothing outstanding about 1999. Uh, it was... Regular uh, and uh, especially having seen and gone through 1999, I'm assuming because they were in 1982 when, or the early 80s when they were making this album. So for that time, it may have been something futuristic. Uh, the first few songs, almost the first six songs, uh, seven songs I would say, were dwelling onto the past and him talking about his past and the childhood days and I remember and I remember. So I kept thinking, is the entire album going to be in his past? Or is it written to be in the past and everything about the past? But luckily it changed from uh, it's all over. So it it's all over and then the past got over and then they turned futuristic. Now this was more futuristic. Uh, so they gave a year to it, 1999 is the year and after that things are going to change. Um, for that time, it, it must have been something uh, people may have been looking forward to. Uh, that around... 17 years ahead or something like that or maybe after the change of the century something new may happen so who knows uh, it may have been important at that time but now it doesn't seem any important uh, so that's the song it doesn't add any value to me uh, in terms of the uh, being a song on the album or otherwise but the previous song still on my head